Every name you want to mention, please do it now. And also for all the Israeli soldiers and the security forces in Israel and around the world. May Hashem bring them home uh, back uh, safely. Soon as Hashem. So this is class number 13. And more to go, Bezat Hashem. We left off talking about Binyamin, and, and we will share today, Bezat Hashem, more <coughs> beautiful things about our forefathers, how they challenged with Ayin Ara, and we will, uh, Bezat Hashem, reveal some insights from uh, in the Tanakh um, about, for, for start, with the division, the division of the land of Israel, something we are learning every Shabbat. And we didn't reach yet to that chapter. Uh, we are chapter Tetvav, 15, and this is chapter 17. But uh, for those who are not uh, familiar with this uh, material, video. Um, Yoshua is dividing the land of Israel <coughs> to the tribes according to a lottery. It's most mostly it's, it's it's a heavenly lottery. We know that Hashem is in control, and everyone got their share. And at some point, the tribe of Yosef came to Yoshua, and they told them the following. This is a quote from uh, your Joshua seventeen fourteen seventeen fourteen. Baruch Atah Adonai Shehakol Nihya Bidbara. Islamu uh, Ideki. You know what Islamu Ideki in Arabic means? Yevorchu Yadaych. May your hands be blessed. Okay. Madua Natata Lina Hala Gorale Had Vehevele Had Vani Am Rav. So they came to Yoshua. Oh, go ahead. The children of Yosef spoke to Yoshua, saying, why have you given me inheritance of only a single lot and a single portion, seeing that I am a numerous people, for Hashem has blessed me to such an extent? Right. He told them, he answered a very strange answer. He said, because you are numerous people. people. Which, what does that mean? I gave it this land because you are a lot of people. What does that mean? So f- first, who came before you, uh, uh, Yoshua? It says, <coughs> B'nai Yosef. Who is Bnei Yosef? Who is Bnei Yosef? Ephraim and the half of Menashe. So a whole tribe and a half a tribe. Tribe and a half coming to complain before uh, Yoshua. And Yoshua says, uh, if that's the case, uh, what he told them, he, uh, you're numerous people. The next pasuk. Yahoshua said to them, If you are such a numerous people, ascend to the forest and clear an area for yourselves there. Uh, okay. Well, what, what, what does that mean? They said there are a lot of people. It says, Oh, because uh, you're a lot of people, go to the forest. Well, what kind of an answer is that? We need a bigger land. We need, they, they have other, it sounds like they have other requirements. Otherwise, they won't complain if they don't have enough um, territory, enough land. <coughs> for themselves what kind of an answer uh, of an answer is that you're a lot of people go to the forest what do you think clear the land clear the forest so you can give more space for the, your, your uh, tribe so you would say okay there's forest cut the trees okay and go fight against all those organizations right. tree huggers and all that right. <laughs> come after you. Come after you. <laughs> all the progressive it's your problem now it's not it's not the amount of Quality of the lens. I would say, well, what's wrong with the forest? It looks like great things can grow there. Trees and whatever. Wildlife. Maybe wildlife, right? Because you have lumber oh, no, for but their homes. They can build homes from that. They can use the lam- lumber for their own, you know, their own houses. But there's something hidden there. You're a numerous people. You're a lot of people. Go to the forest. What does that mean? How, what does it got to do with anything? Yeah, yeah, it's right to so many people see you. Oh, 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 oh,
You know what? He says, I, Yeshua says, I got it. You're a lot of people, and I can control over you because you're so many, so bloody. Hide in the, in the forest. You have in your territory a lot of trees. Make sure many people live among these trees. So for if someone go to, a, I don't know, to a close to a mountain and try to look at your territory, he won't see all of you because many of you are hidden within this forest. Make sense? They could have sent them to caves. Um, Ma? You said earlier, B'nai Yosef was putter from Ayinhar. Oh, so Larry is asking a very good question. That was my next thing. Didn't we learn that Yosef, children of already blessed and they're protected from Ayinhar? Yeah. And never, Yoshua didn't know that? He knows that. They know it. He Everybody is, knows it. He is from the tribe of Yosef. He himself from the tribe of Yosef, I'm afraid. <coughs> So what, what do you have any you have to worry about Ain Ara, the evil lie? Don't push your luck. Don't push your luck. <laughs> Yoshua, what CP says, Yoshua is teaching us a great lesson. There's something we call Ain Somchin Al Hanes. What is Ain Somchin Al Hanes? One must not uh, yeah. depend yeah. on miracles. Yeah. We do not rely on miracles. <coughs> which means to be protected from Ayinara, even if you get a blessing for that, a specific blessing for that, it's still a miracle. But don't push your luck, don't push it. So do whatever you can in order to protect yourself from Ayinara, and then Bezrat Hashem, Hashem will help. Okay, so even if you bless, so even if we did all this trick, remember with the fingers and the hand looking at the left nose because it's uh, Yosef is belongs to this part, the left side. I don't want to go through it all again. You, all the tricks that we're doing uh, with the Ruda and everything works, but this is called preventive medicine. Okay, do everything you can to prevent because some to prevent Ainara because some people have such a strong Ainara. Sometimes even the miracle won't help. Okay? So everyone must make efforts to protect themselves in order for the bracha to work. You do your part. Hashem says, I'll do my part. So we conclude this part of uh, <coughs> the Ayinara with this. We're going now all the way to Megillat Rut. Megillat Rut. Soon we're going to read Megillat Rut. Pretty soon. <coughs> it's Passover and then Shavuot. Megillat Rut starts with a story about a death of a person. Who was it? A very important person. Well known person. The Bill Gates of those days. His name was Elimelech. Your fair harmony, Elimelech. Bayamot Elimelech, you can find it in Megillah's root, first chapter, verses 3 to 5. Bayamot Elimelech, Ish Naomi, Vatisher, He, Ushne Vaneha, Vayamutu Gamshne, Machlon, Vechilion, Vatisher, Aisha, Mishne, Eladea, Hume Isha. Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the no, second. No, 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 sorry. No, no, so, three people died in this sukkim that we just read. Eli Melech, the husband of Naomi, and the mother of Machlon and Chilion. Okay. But Ishera Isha, so she left alone. We know what happened later. That's why we're focusing it. What was the reason? <coughs> for the death of Elimelech and his sons, it says in the Midrash Zut Arut, in the Midrash Rut, it says, Vayamutu Gam Shnehem. Elimelech died, and it says, Gam Shnehem. What's Gam in Hebrew? Oh. Also, also, Machlon and Chilion. Our sages said, anytime he says Gam, it's, it's for the same reason, <coughs> it's related to it. Okay, from the same reason. Alto el tomar ein tzara eno maka ela ba'avot lelamdecha she ein tzara maka av babanim. The bed eye strike 
not only the parents, but would strike the children as well. But what happened? Why the eye in Tzarao, the bad eye, or the evil eye that we see in a minute, strike Elimelech? What did he do wrong? <coughs> what, what happened? He left. He didn't go back to Bethlehem? He left. I, 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 listen, I can go wherever I want. What's the problem? Am I, am I, uh, uh, hold on, hold on. I, 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 am I the president of the land? Am I connected to anybody? This is my life. I, I, as a businessman, I'm traveling. And I like to travel, so I travel to Moab, and I would like to stay for a few months, maybe years. What happened? What's wrong with that? He was wealthy and he left. He wanted to become rich and he wanted to be like him. There was a famine in the land. There was a famine in the land. And it says, I'm going to share with you a word that it says. The Midrash says, <coughs> it's because of Ayin Tzara, not Ayin Ra'a yet. It's Ayin Tzara. What is Tsar Ayin Tsara or Tsar Ayin? Stingy. Nar, right. Tsar it means narrow, it means small, stingy, stinginess. It was too cheap. I mean, meaning he, he, he likes what he, what he earned to keep for himself. So what happened was, it was a famine, and he was a giver, but then he noticed that more and more people coming to him. Now, sometimes Hashem give wealth. Many times. Shem gives wealth through people that they will share with other people. Tell me why one person, I just read today, I got it, uh, the, the richest man in the world, I forgot his name. The other second one is Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Amazon. I don't know him personally, Hello? but he has, for now, $198 billion. One ninety-eight. Next to him, third place, is the guy with the, the Tesla. Elon Musk. 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 Well, only 195. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. What a person needs so much money. What for? To help others. I don't know if you do that, but if he does that, but just a, a food for thought. <clears throat> so Eli Melech it was expected from Shemayim to help other people, but he has Tsarut Ayin. Due to his stinginess, Midat Hadin, the tribute of judgment, came down and strike him and his two sons. Hmm. But well, what, 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 what two sons? Money? What, what, what's wrong? What, what happened? Why? Why his two sons? The first, the first thing I have to say: their names were not exactly. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to go there. I know. <laughs> I know. It's yeah, not their the real name. They were after the name of each. Uh, anyways. You were name a kid. Yeah. What when is the when name? we study the, the, the Megillah, we'll see what, why their name were replaced. But it looks like, you know, there is a saying, Avot achlu boser banim tikhena. It's a question. If the parents committed a sin, why you punish the kids? Hashem promised to Moshe Rabbeinu that won't happen. If Avot, if the parents didn't follow Torah and then uh, they get their punishment, the kids will be protected under one condition. What's the condition? banim ochzim be avot. Under one condition that the children are not following the footsteps of their parents. Meaning, if there are tzaddikim, imagine to yourself someone that's a tzaddik, he did teshuva. His father is a wicked. He shouldn't be punished for his, the, the actions of his parents. So that's a promise. It's not gonna, never going to happen. It seems like the children of Elimelech follow his uh, legacy, not to give so much. We can't take from him what he gave so far. But he did a grave mistake. At the most important time that was supposed to support the Jewish nation, and that's the very reason why he was living at that time and getting all that wealth, to help people. And he messed it up. So he paid a very high price, the most ultimate price, with his own life. Mm. So he got so much money in the back and he can't enjoy from it. What, what's the point of having so many <coughs> billions and he can't enjoy from it? The Midrash says, Rashi says, I'm sorry, Elimelech, Ashir Gadolaya, he was very, very rich. Ufarnas Hado, he got a title. The one that is, uh, I don't know how to say, Parnassador. Sustaining the generation. Sustaining the generation. 
the, the, the whole generation was dependent on him or something like that. And he left Eretz Israel. He had such achrayut, such responsibility, and he left. It's a business trip. He just <laughs> forgot to come back. Mipnei tzarut ha'ayin. I was say just revealing the secret. What happened? He was stingy. Shaita ha'ino tzara ba'anim. He was stingy toward poor people. Ha'ba'im ledochko l'chen ha'enash. They pushed him. Every day, every day, more and more people. People that he knew, people that didn't know. They were supposed to understand that this is the, the time that they need uh, your help. It, uh, what we say about, uh, it was said about Esther. Maybe La'et Kazot, Esther, you're there. Maybe for that reason, you're there. Esther realized that, and she did what he did. She saved the Jewish people. At uh, first glance, it looks like that this is a decree from Shamayim as a punishment over his stinginess, as it looks from the Loshon of the Midrash and Rashi that we just mentioned. But Yalkut Shimoni brings something, uh, a different uh, vision, a different way to look at it. And he says, Vayamot Elimelech, Elimelech died Ish Naomi. Vayamutu Gam Shnei Lelam Decha to teach us that the father and the two sons die. She'ayin hara maka gam babanim. It's a very strong statement. So I tell you why Elimelech and the two sons died. <coughs> Due to ayin hara. What ayin hara? Who gave him ayin hara? Who gave him ayin hara? What happened here? And another question. I don't know why you're not going to ask me that. This family has a father, a mother, and two sons. Who died? Everyone except? Mother. What's up with Naomi? She's not part of the. She's not part of part of the mishpacha. She's a tzaddikah. Tzaddikah. In which way she's a tzaddikah? That's that's for sure. Well, she, didn't she didn't want to leave. She didn't want to leave. She always gave. Um, she was so generous. She always, always was a giver in 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 in, in public in, in hidden, in many different ways, at all time. And due to her righteousness, she was able to save herself. But we see her something else now that I want to focus. It says, but according to the Alkut, Lelam Decha to teach you that I Nara Evil Eye would strike the father and also the kids, the sons. What happened? So we've learned one of the shields against Ainara is to be a giver. As long as you give, you're protected from Ainara. You know, many people, Baruch Hashem, has a lot of wealth and they're well protected because they give. Not, many of them probably not aware of that. One second. Okay. Elimelech, as long, it says, Zchut Atzdoko Egeno. So, meaning that the, the, the merit of the Tzedakah gave him protection. At the second he stopped, he removed the shields. And now he's exposed. Because it was Midat Adin all over the land of Israel. Try to strike Elimelech every day. Can't go through the shields of Tzedakah that he did. As soon as he stopped, he became vulnerable. And he got hit. When the Midat Adin started to work extra hours, it will hit <coughs> the sons and with the kids and families as well. So, you want to say something? I was wondering whether Naomi Naomi was aware of her husband's stinginess and did she try to influence him to be more I generous? Didn't see, I didn't see any information about it. If she was a tzaddikus. And I, also, did she know he was that way when, before she married him? Or do we know anything I don't about know. that? We or? don't know. We don't know. But uh, we will see Be'ezrat Hashem, I think it will be later, yeah, we see that another person, not Jewish, that he was a giver. As long as he gave, he was protected. As soon as he stopped, he lost everything he had. Who is this guy? We'll see this Rashi later. Maybe hopefully today. So we've learned that, nevertheless, it was a midat <coughs> adin, very active against everyone else. 
he should think. He says, everyone else suffering. And Bo Hashem, I have business, I have money, I can pr provide myself, my family. He didn't stop to think, how is it possible that his business is usual and yet everyone else get hit. But uh, he got the, 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 a grave punishment for his uh, behavior, his actions. Moving on to the next figure with a very strange re request. Let me start by asking you a question. Anyone that wants to have children, what he wish to himself? What kind of a child they want? Healthy, Healthy the okay. smartest in the generation, the big dolador, the go dolador, midos will be everything to be in the top of the pyramid. Number one, numero uno, I pay. right? I pay plus. Beautiful, Baruch Hashem. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. That's what you wish to yourself, right? You wish to have the best children, top of the line. And here comes a lady that asks, do you hear about a lady that asks of average son? <laughs> Hashem, give me an average one. <laughs> Did you hear about that before? Not a I'm going to quote mother. now. Not a Jewish mother. Not a Jewish mother. I think she was very much Jewish. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it says about Hannah, mm. the mother of Shmuel. Shmuel. She was, what was the problem? She couldn't, she couldn't bear children. Mm -hmm. okay. How you say Akara? Barren. 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 Okay. She was crying before Hashem and she said, I'm going to quote from um, Book of Shmuel A, Shmuel Aleph, first chapter, verses 10 and 11. Vehi marat nefesh patitpalel al Hashem uvakotiv she was crying for years. Her husband is the God of Lador. Her husband's name is Elkanah. There's a settlement in Israel named after him. Elkanah, right? After that. And she was crying. We've learned great things from this lady, Hannah. What do we learn from Hannah that we do every day? The silent fila, right? Silent fila. We're learning silent from a woman. Your wife gets a recording. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't send her the link. <laughs> okay. Vatidor neder and she made a vow. ותאמר השם צבאות אם ראו תראה בעוני עמתך וזכרתני ולא תשכח את עמתך. And now she said, ונתת, you give לעמתך, זרע אנשים. ונתתי, ונתתי להשם כל ימי חייו, ומורה לא יעלה על ראשו. What is, what is, what I'm sorry, um, you didn't, you doubt it. Wait, 10 and 11. Sorry. Hmm? She was feeling better, and she prayed to Hashem, mm -hmm. weeping continuously. She made a vow and said, Hashem, Master of Legions, if you take note of the suffering of your maidservant, and you remember me, and do not forget your maidservant, and give your maidservant male offspring, then I shall give him to Hashem, all the days of his life, and a razor shall not come upon his head. Okay. So, by the way, what age he entered the uh, uh, Mishkan? Three. To with Eli? When he was two years old, right? No, no, Absher. So, and he was there for, he was dedicated to Hashem for 50 years, so he died at the age of 52. Okay. Now, <clears throat> That's the same so as a Nazarite. So she was, she was, she was, huh? That's the same as a Nazarite. She, he was a Nazarite. That's the. Okay. She, he was, yeah. She, Thank she, you. so she was uh, in bitterness uh, of soul, and 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 she prayed to Hashem and wept bitterly. Now she asked for yes. something that's called zera anashim. What zera anashim? How they translate it here? Male offspring. Male offspring. The 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 Mefarshim asked why she didn't ask for a zera. 
children. She added the word zera anashim. So the Talmud Bavli in Tractat Brachos, <coughs> page thirty-one B, Lamed Aleph Amud Bet, says the following: V'natata lamed cha zera anashim. Please, Hashem, give me zera anashim. What zera anashim? Rabbonu nasei zera anashim zera shemuvla ben anashim. Someone average, not too tall, not too short, not small, not big, not white, not dark. Uh, not too smart, not too stupid. Lo chacham velo tipesh. That's what it says. Understand that? Yeah, average guy. So, so, so every mother, every mother, every parent. Uh, they, they, you know what? They want the best for the children. They want the best of the best, the top of the pyramid. What's up with Hana? Why like she did that? Why she did that? She didn't like people to give them the evil eye. Ma? Ah. Ah. Rashi says, Rashi says, Rashi point up. I tell you why she asked for something like that. Velo chacham, not too smart. She lo ye teima beine abriot umitoch shenit barin bo sholetet bo ainara. Finally, his mother got pregnant. And you know, he's Gedola Do, and he's the Rebbitzin. Everybody is looking up to them, and they, they talk about them. And they got, finally, she got such a great son. She was afraid that Ayn Ara will strike her son. This is why she asked for an average one. Mm. Was, Even, he a, huh? was he a Gilgul? Shmuel? Yeah. Kamuvan, of course, this is an exception, okay? We should all ask for children, I think, above average. She eventually got such a great son as Shmuel. <coughs> he was compared to Moshe and Aaron together, and he was, he was really a great influence over that generation. He was uh, anointing uh, two, thi- two kings, Shaul and King David. Okay, She was afraid, basically, from hitpa'alut, from amazement, remember? Amazement can cause uh, attention, and attention will bring curiosity and jealousy, and, and the whole package. Hashem, I'm, I'm happy with an average son that will continue the legacy of my son, my my uh, my husband uh, Elkanah. What happened there? Eventually, Bezat <coughs> Hashem, when we learn the book of Shemuel. We see what about the relationship between her and Penina. What happened between the two, and why she got such a great son like Shmuel? Why she got such a zchut to have a son like Shmuel? He was not an ordinary, normal son. He could speak at the age of two, speak, make a conversation. You think Eli, the leader of that generation, the Kohen? will accept uh, two years old, still have diapers mm-hmm. in the most holy place. Hashem <coughs> was communicating with Shmuel when Eli could not hear the words mm. the, 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 when Hashem called him. Shmuel, Shmuel. Eli thought, I'm sorry, Shmuel thought that Eli is calling him. We're talking about top of the line, very special figure. Bottom line, we learn from here, according to Rashi, that every uh, human trait that is not in measure, it's, it's above average, will cause curiosity. Okay. So you have a son, Baruch Hashem, we have children that they're geniuses. What you can do? You take books out of the room and do it from now on, you're not reading anymore. <laughs> what do you do? Can you give me an advice what to do? You have children that they are talented. Um, teach them. Give them love. How you protect them from Ayn Ara? You put out because now they're vulnerable. You they're teach. above average. Don't they get medals. You teach they want they want my mathematic I don't know competition. Then they got medals and in math, in, 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 in spelling. Huh? You just said if in the previous thing that if you're a giver and you're kind, giver. Then it, Tzedakah will protect the children. And be modest. Be modest. No, you put a garlic. Roll garlic. 
Oh, so people <laughs> to be distant from you. You have to eat it. You know. Okay, so we have ways to handle brachot. Uh, uh, Even if you get blessed with wonderful children, we, 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 we still have to worry. Okay? Even, even if you are from the descendants of yes, yes. Yosef, you still have to worry. See how Ainara is so strong. Even we have all the tools in the world and all protection, we still can, we can still be vulnerable. Okay. Any questions? Can we move on? What time? Huh? What about him? Oh, so Shmola, Shlomo Amela has has a special promise. What is it? He got his wisdom from Hashem. Mm -hmm. Did he born that way? No. no. He born very clever, yes, very smart. He got something extra, a gift from Hashem. And Hashem says, with the gift that I'm giving you, you'll be protected. Okay? Because mainly it's for the needs of the people. How do we know that? Shlomo asked that not for himself. For the sake of his people. Tenli Hashem live Shomea, right? Mm -hmm. So Hashem says, you care about the people, my children. You didn't ask to be the richest, the <coughs> strongest, the best warrior, conquer land. Live Shomea for the sake of my children. I will give you everything, even though the, what you didn't ask, and I will make sure you'll be protected. And all that, by the way, is under condition that they follow Torah and Mitzvot. Mm -hmm. oh, it's always under the condition that you keep Torah and Mitzvot. <coughs> so we see great people that was worried about Ra'in Ara. Well, we can say. We should definitely learn from their ways. Our next figures are the students of Shmuel we just mentioned. Who were they? Shaul and David. Do you remember any mention anywhere in the book of Samuel anything that is related to Ainara? Anything? Okay. So, it was a great war <coughs> between the Plishtim and the Israelite. It was always a tense uh, uh, relationship. Hmm? Right. <laughs> uh, don't compare the police to the Palestinians. No, the right. 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 <laughs> so at some point they declare war and they gathered in, in a place and Shaul came with thousands of people and they left every day. He left eventually I think with 3,000 people. At some point to the battle zone a young man came. Young man. Not even 30 yet. Who is it? King David. It's the famous story with Goliath. Okay, so he came to the camp, and his father Yishai. Yishai, it was the tzaddik of that den that uh, generation. Yishai is one of the four. You know that. No, they're not supposed to die. It says, Metu be'etyo shel nachash. The only reason they die, these, pe these people, these four people, is because the serpent brought uh, uh, so much judgment to the world and he brought death to the world. Otherwise, they're so tzedikim. Who is these four people? You remember? Binyamin. Binyamin. It's the first one. Amram. Amram is the second one. Yishai. Yishai is the third. Kilav. And Kilav, Kilav is the son of David. David was a sandwich. His father and his son. Look what kind of generation he lived in. Such a great Sadiqim. And Kilav was like his father. He looks like his father. He was smart again. This is why they call him Kilav. Kulav. Like Kuloav. He's all like Av. Like Abba. Call oh, like Av. It's like his father. So Yishai, you can read his name. But, right? Yud, mm -hmm. Yud. Yeah. By the way, who else? David. 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 Awesome. So his father says, Come, take Arubatam Tikach. He says, to his, uh, father, Listen, your brother is in, in, in a battle zone. Take food for them, take food for the commanders. He brought them some, I don't know, uh, 
wagons, a chariot, whatever, with a lot of food. And he says to him, "En arubatam tikach." What's arubatam tikach? Make sure that they sign up the, the the divorce documents. Bring them, bring them here. Back then, the rule was you can't fight if you didn't give <coughs> a divorce to your wife. Mm. Why? So you won't get the status of aguna. What's aguna? It's a lady that we can't. They can't find She's their father. Their their uh, their uh, her, uh, her husband. 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 She's in so they don't. He died. They didn't die. Uh, okay. So what they do? They would give these documents of divorce, and now she is free. When they come back after a few months or a year or two from the battle, okay, they were re remarried. Okay, two witnesses, Rabbi, boom, we break the glass. The finish. It's an issue. This is why Kohanim never participated in the war. Okay, mm -hmm. you white you 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 would have a kohen in the battle zone. It usually, is the high priest, sure, sure, sure. huh? Right, high priest. They come to give them some war, but they never participated. The levy didn't go for that uh, complicated reason. And there is something also called get out nigh on the condition. Mm -hmm. Let's not go there. Anyways, he's going with a mission to the battle zone to give them the get. He gets there. He's talking with the people. He meets his brothers. Uh, the oldest brother was upset with him. Why are you doing here? You left uh, <coughs> livestock like that. You were supposed to stay there. Oh, no, my Abba told me. Abba says, oh, they will come to bring that. They, yeah, till that day, they didn't know the value of David. David, you know, Because David had a status of mm -hmm. mamzer, bastard. You heard that? Mm -hmm. You know that? Illegitimate. Illegitimate. That's what I thought. He himself says, Muzar ani lechai. He wrote one of the Psalms. Long story. I don't want to go there now, but I don't have to. If I had time, I would share with you why they thought that. Okay, I have like 10 minutes. So, quickly, um, his mother. What's what's uh, uh, King David's mother? His Sarah. name? No, no, not his wife. No, his mother. Mm. King David's father is Yishai. What's his mother's name? Start with Nun, Nitzevet. So name is Nitzevet Bas Adiel. So Nitzevet Bas Adiel wants to have a child with uh, Yishai. Back then, it was an issue in the Bes Midrash uh, about. Moavi, no Moavi, because Yishai comes from Ruth. Ruth. So, an issue rose up in the shul, in the Mizrah, in the Beth Midrash, about the Moavi, yes, no, Moavi, men, Moavi, female, Moavit, Moavi. So Yishai told his Nitzavet, it's a dika, the rabbits, and listen, for some times I can't be with you, uh, till they figure it out in the, in, in, in the Beth Midrash. They already have children. But he knew if she goes to the mikveh, they to be together. She prepared herself and she couldn't, uh, she wanted to have a child with him. Okay, I'm just skipping, giving you the time. And he, Yishai, in one hand, he can't be with his wife, but in the other hand, he can't be with another woman. So he told the servant to be, prepare herself. It's like, oh, everything is halachically good. Okay. The servant came to. And it's ever said, This is the your husband tonight. I need to prepare myself. Thanks for letting me know. What she did, she went to that room to be with her husband. And her husband thinks this is the servant. Mm. After three months, she can see after three months, people said, Your wife is pregnant. Somebody I'm pregnant. Else. I separate, separate from, her, from her. So, Chaz Visholom, people will think that there is a problem with that and they might re might reflect the other children he put her in a separate place she knows she's the only one only she and her and Kodesh Baruch you know it's kosher 100% and she kept silent for 28 years didn't say anything and now she is raising David in the barn in a, in, 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 in a side house <coughs> you can imagine how the brothers treat him Nobody knows that he is supposed to be the king. And Mashiach will come from him. 
So he's now in the battle zone. How they treat him? As uh, not kosher sand. They don't know the truth yet. The truth will be revealed <coughs> later. He didn't know it either. Did he? It's a good question if her mother, his mother shared that with him or not. He suffered. He suffered a lot. And, okay, let me not go there because it's <coughs> debatable among the Mephashim if he knows because he's, he wrote some of the Tehillim when he was there and you can find, know from that that he knew, but something. Anyways, going back to the battlefield. He's there. And all of a sudden he hears while he's talking with his brothers, someone is screaming at the Jewish people. It was a big guy. Uh, his name was Goliath, coming twice a day, early in the morning, exactly when it's time to read Kriyashma, and in the evening, and yelling and challenging them. Come and fight with me. We don't have to go, I don't know, army against army. Many people will die, just one on one. The losers will become servants to the winners. And using bad words, and, 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 not, and King David couldn't stand that. He says, who is this guy that's saying such things against my God, my Hashem? So I told him, shh, what are you crazy? This is, this is crazy Goliath. It's going to kill all of us. Shh. He says, no, shush. Don't tell me, shush. Who is this guy? King David was full of emunah. He's a little guy. Full of emunah. And says, okay, let me discuss it with King Saul. How you could reach King Saul? Because King Saul knew him from before. He was playing the harp, the harp in his house and the violin, the kino, maybe other instruments. You know them. <coughs> Bottom line, I don't have time. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Bottom line, uh, a conversation started between uh, Shaul and David. And Shaul, David is convincing Shaul that he is prepared. He can even defeat this guy. So for 40 days, they hear this crazy guy. <coughs> that if, if, you, if you read uh, Targum Yonatan, you'll see the conversation in, that Goliath was saying. He was actually saying, who is Shaul? He was challenging Shaul. Who is Shaul? You're your king. What did he do in his life to become a king? And then he gave them a list of people. I killed so many. And I did this and I did that and the police team, my brothers didn't make me even an officer. I'm a, just a regular commander. I'm on, on the regular soldiers. Who is this show? I'm challenging him. He was saying that every day, twice a day. So David told the show, but no volunteers by the way, no one volunteered. No one takes such responsibility. You know? Halachic, they said, not that we don't have someone to fight against these guys. We have people that know Krav Maga and all that. That's not the issue. It's, it's a responsibility. If we lose, then it's going to be on my shoulder. You know, Allah excuses. But King David says, I can challenge him. I killed the bear. I killed the lion. I did this. I did that. And then, right. right. No, no, I don't want to read because I don't have time. But thank you for opening because uh, short in time. So Shaul says, maybe from Shamaim. They send me this guy. Let's give it a shot. Mm -hmm. So he says, okay, wait here. And what Shaul did? Yeah. Shaul went to take, and he took his own uniform. He says, if you have to fight such guy, I'm going to give him the best armor. I'm going to give him my shield, my sword, my helmet. So you should have some advantage. And what happened? David <coughs> took the uniform, put it on himself, and it fits perfectly. So what's wrong? He was a boy. What's wrong? He's because a because guy. Shaul was a big guy. Yeah. Shaul was a very tall guy. Let's say he says XXX extra large, and this guy is uh, medium to large, maybe medium. How is it possible that it fits? So he put the helmet. See it perfectly. You know, before in, in the Israeli army, the IDF, they give you different type of helmet and you have to measure. <laughs> if, it, if, if it's dancing on your head, it, uh, you have to find something that will sit perfectly. You can tie it. Good. So you measure. And if it's perfectly, how is it possible? Medium. 
<coughs> on extra eggs are allowed. Shaul was looking at him and wondering about that. David noticed that he is looking at him. And he said, wow, that's perfectly fit. And then he sees that he looks at him in such a way. He says, uh, <clears throat> you know what? This is not that uh, I don't use to wear this stuff. I'm going to handle it my way. And he took all off. It's a great protection for you if you shoot an arrow in you or hit you in the head with <laughs> something. He was willing to give it up because David was suspecting something. Ayin hara from Shaul. Ayin hara from Shaul. Why Shaul would give him ayin hara? Because he's going to be jealous. Let's read. What time is it? Ah, yeah, yeah. Tov. Guys, this is just was an introduction. Introduction <laughs> to Beis uh, Hashem next week. Next Same week we're going to continue in depth to what really happened, the story in King David and Saul, and why David took off this uh, special arm. Well, I wish you Shavua Tov and all the blessings. Thank you. Thank you.